I have a pretty good job. I really can't complain. I, I mean, I get to be my own boss. I'm the sole determiner of my fate, more or less. How much effort I put into it is basically how much reward I get out of it. And, and that's something that you really can't say for a lot of jobs out there. They're very streamlined, they're very mundane, for lack of a better word, very repetitive. And I mean, that could be me right now. If, I, if I'd been using my college degrees, I'd be on some oil rig somewhere or I'd be pushing papers in an office. A lot of people work jobs like that, and I'm grateful that they do, especially on the service side of things. The reason why we have what we have is because of the work that they do. Uh, in this space, I am somewhat of an entertainer. I still do provide services for folks, but um, I mean, ultimately, my, my primary source of income on YouTube is through videos. And without the videos, I really can't do the other things. I can't perform the other services I provide. Uh, and and one, of the, one of the more... I don't know, lackluster sides of being a tech YouTuber in particular is the cleaning process. Now you're thinking, oh, cleaning your office, that's nothing. What are you filming this for? Well, we also have to clean up builds. And no, this isn't a PCDC video, although I will show you this build is, is well, kind of dirty, although the dust filters did save the day for the most part. Uh, disassembling PCs is just, it's, it's like a weekly, if not daily occurrence here on the channel. And uh, you guys don't get to see it because, well, most of the time, it really has nothing to do with fixing computers or cleaning them or, I don't know, building elaborate systems in crazy cases or what have you. Uh, but in this video, I want to show you some of the pains and aches involved with disassembling a custom loop like this one here, which we built around nine or so months ago. So you can see this thing is, well, it's an eye catcher. It's pink, white, and black, and that, that's just a, a very weird color combination for a PC, but that was why I was so excited to build this to begin with. I haven't built really anything like this before, especially with this color combo. I found these custom cables online. They were pretty cheap and I decided to try to match coolant as close as I could to it. Problem is when you let a system run for nine months straight, right, you get some some issues. Uh, there's been some fluid evaporating. I noticed that the level in the reservoir has been slowly depleting. That might just be the result of air bubbles slowly working their way out of radiators and such, but uh, we do, uh, I mean, after nine months of running nonstop, you should probably do a bit of maintenance on a custom loop, especially if it's using opaque coolant like this. So I'm curious to see what the buildup is like, especially in the CPU block. Uh, and we'll also see if there's any staining in the tubing and in the distro block up front from EK. Pretty much this entire build uh, was uh, supported by EK Waterblocks. So I want to thank them for that. Again, uh, the case is a Lee and Lee 011 Mini, the Snow White Edition. And uh, we have this graphics card in here from Gigabyte, which a few people were disappointed about because we didn't custom cool it. I wanted just an air-cooled card. It's very simple. Um, but I can understand the complaints because, yes, the distro does support GPU custom cooling, and I just uh, omitted it because I just wanted to be able to slide a card in and call it a day. But all that to say, taking apart systems, it kind of sucks, right? It's like disassembling your hard work. It's, <laughs> it's undoing all the hard work you just did. But uh, along the way, I'm also very curious about the state of the loop. Again, I want to check specifically the CPU block and see if we have any clogging in there. You know, when you have opaque coolant like this, it's, it's possible. And um, I'm curious. I hope you are too. Stick with me. Be quiet, N not you guys, the company. Their new Lightwings fans offer impressive lighting and superior cooling all while maintaining a low noise profile with high grade rifle bearing technology and PWM support. Up to 20 individually addressable LEDs are baked into a large ring diffuser and you'll experience some of the cleanest RGB lighting around. Controlled by your motherboard and with the help of a splitter included in the triple packs. Choose between either 120 or 140 mil counterparts as well as standard or high RPM variants for the ideal config in your build. Learn more about Be Quiet Lightwings fans by clicking the link below. Now I want to kick things off with cleanliness. I'm surprised actually that the Lee and Lee 11 Mini maintained its cleanliness as long as it did, especially seeing as though the top of this dust filter is caked in small little pellets of dust, and that's because the panel on top of this has small holes, so the dust settled in those, but it didn't make its way through the dust filter, which is great. You can see I'll just swipe my hand across here. Yeah. So, uh, I'm glad this is not all in the system, It'd just be one more step. You know, there was a lot about this case that I really liked at the time, and uh, just reflecting on it, the Lee and Lee 11 Mini is just an incredible chassis. It's very versatile, very flexible, you can customize PCI slot layout, you can fit up to ATX motherboards in here, I believe, although we have an ITX config as is. You can fit so many radiators in here, so many fans, I mean a full-on custom loop for Pete's sake. So if you're interested, check this thing out, I'll have it linked below, it is one of the cases I recommend in this form factor. Leave it to Gigabyte to throw on the chunkiest cooler for an RTX 3060. I mean, look, this thing is freaking huge. Uh, you can see a bit of dust made its way into the fin stack, but uh, not very much. I mean, considering it's been running for nine months straight again, 
this isn't bad. I can't complain. I just hate, you know, again, part of the, uh, <laughs> just part of the package of being a YouTuber, having to see all your hard work just get d destroyed. I mean, have to take it all apart. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is probably drain the loop because, I mean, removing anything else is going to require that anyway. It doesn't make sense to try to take the fans out, etc. when we could just remove the entire assembly once the loop is detached. Now, there's a jank way to remove this fluid, and there's um, a non-jank way. We're going with the jank way because why not? I'm just going to crack open the, the drain port here at the bottom. I've got a freaking bowl that's been used for painting at one point. Uh, where all this fluid's gonna pour in, hopefully. And we're just gonna let it rip. It's gonna get pretty messy. Yep, that's not even remotely making its way in. If I can tilt it, that's still not working. Well, we're just gonna sit here for a minute and hope that this doesn't go everywhere. Right, so that was a uh, that was messy. The non-jank way to do this, by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, would be to flip this entire case, like front side downward, and then just crack the fill port and let it drain into a bowl or something. I decided to do it standing up because it would seem to be much easier to film and uh, it kind of backfired, but at least it didn't get on the carpet. I see this was so much easier, but I insist on overcomplicating it. For whatever reason, yeah, much smoother. Go ahead and start removing some of these cables now, get the power supply sorted, and once all that's taken care of, then uh, we can remove the fans and the top radiator since most of the water's drained out of the top, uh, and then we'll take the bottom radiator out, and then we can remove the distro block with the CPU block kind of as one big piece, just saves on the spillage later on. You can see though, for all the effort we put into assembling this custom loop, again nine or so months ago, you have to spend that much time again to disassemble it. The only difference is, there's no real reward at the end of this because there's no final product. You can't just like kind of sit back and admire the hard work. It's just, it's just disassembly, you know? You're just storing stuff for later. Again, one of the reasons why uh, it's not my favorite part of this job. I just realized we have a ton of daisy chain cables. I do not remember that the first time around. Come with me if you want to live. Well, that was just awful. So we're gonna loosen the two remaining screws holding this radiator up. And now I've got to undo these fittings. The way I had to install this was a bit finicky because there wasn't enough space to kind of wedge these tiny little pipes in. So we'll undo these fittings here at the top and then we have to pull this entire assembly back. See, so it snaps out of, out of place there. All right, and then we'll remove two remaining screws. Got to hold up the radiator to do this. Okay, and we'll very carefully slide it all out. All right, we'll do the exact same thing here for the bottom radiator. You can see all the fluid is out of these two pipes, but there is some fluid in the radiator. And of course there's some fluid here in these top tubes you can see barely on camera. So uh, we need to be a bit careful. Of course, spilling is not a huge deal. Now we're taking the system apart, but uh, it just keeps the cleaning process a bit more straightforward later. Easy does it. Nice. This stuff looks like melted strawberry ice cream. We're gonna get rid of it though. There's no sense in repurposing it because we have plenty more fluid for future custom loops. Last few pieces here for the CP runs. These uh, are a bit longer, so they're easier just to kind of wiggle out. Flip this up and then pull out from this side. Easy does it. We'll prep the motherboard for removal. We'll get the type C port disconnected, USB 3.2 disconnected, and a few more screws. For what it's worth, this was a really solid platform. Elliptogen Intel really never got a lot of love, and I think it was justified. It wasn't really the best value platform out there. I mean, it wasn't a a huge shift from 10th gen performance, uh, but now that Alder Lake is out, I mean, these 11900Ks are, are kind of... Uh, yeah, just kind of pointless. I wouldn't recommend buying one of these today, that's for sure. Now it's time to wash everything out, and this is the part that sucks the most because it just takes a long time. You have to disassemble quite a bit. And you can see all the fittings, all of the uh, caps for the fittings, the CPU block, the distro. I've already washed out the radiators, but those were pretty gross as well. You can flush this with vinegar or something else to get any of the uh, clog stuff out of these small little channels. Uh, look, the, the coolant actually held up quite well. I don't see too much staining here, but it is important we clean this stuff because if we don't, long-term definitely will uh, start to see some purple staining along the inside of the distro and the CPU block. And we don't want that because these components are really expensive. Hot water helps and uh, yeah, we just let it rip. Oh, look at all of that pink just exploded from the channels in the CPU block. That was pretty gross. Another reason why we want to clean this stuff. 
And uh, already, just from running it underwater for a few seconds, that block looks so much better. Now the best way to do this is to completely disassemble the block, get down to the channels and start scrubbing those with either a toothbrush or something just to get all of the potentially clogged gunk out of there. But uh, it looks pretty good here. I mean, again, I'm surprised that the coolant held up this well. Pretty, pretty impressive for opaque stuff from uh, EK. So yeah, this block looks almost brand new already just with water. Really good stuff. These fittings all need to be taken care of. The extensions, God, this water is freaking toasty. And lastly, the distro. This one's gonna take a while because it is so large and there are so many channels. I'm gonna try to see if I can fill it up here. It's really awkward with this like <laughs> de facto bathroom sink. And after about 30 more minutes of that, we have a clean case. It is now just, yeah, it's just bare, empty, like it would look if you pulled it out of the box for the first time. A bit sad, seeing as though the way we started this, uh, it had a full custom loop in it. And here is most of that gear, apart from the tubes, which I tossed because we won't need these uh, for whatever custom loop we assemble later on. The radiator fin stacks still need to be scrubbed a bit. I will tackle that after the fact. Uh, but the insides of them, the channels and everything have been flushed. The blocks look a lot better and we've reassembled each of these fittings. They are ready to go for a new build. Whew. Okay, uh, maybe that wasn't so bad, you know? I mean, like, come on, Greg, we just, you just complaining just to complain, what the heck? It is, if I'm being honest, one of the things that I hate the most about this job, and it's not like I hate it that much, it's not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but uh, taking apart my own work, my own artwork, I would go so far as to say, especially with the custom loop side of things, can be a bit depressing. Um, you know, seeing all the hard work pay off is one thing, but then to undo all of that and to sort of go backwards, it, 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 cuts a bit deep and um, you know every time I build a new system I always know in the back of my head that eventually it will be taken apart and I, I guess sort of being in this position has kind of ruined that surprise for me um, when I first started building computers just kind of repetitively I would, I would flip them for 50 bucks or $100 profit something like that when I was in college I was always so excited to put it together to get all the parts in a parts list and then click order and then to see everything show up and just be so anxious to see what the system looked like when it was all assembled. And I still have that passion, but it's it's nowhere near as strong as it used to be. And I think it's because this has kind of been converted into a full-time job of mine. And um, I guess, you know, everything with time more or less does become a bit boring. And uh, I think the the peak of that is when you have to then disassemble the thing that you're slightly losing passion about. I'm certainly not losing passion for tech in general. And I make that very clear. The reason why I continue doing what I'm doing is because I, I freaking love it. Uh, but when it comes to PC builds specifically, I mean, I always try to go out of my way to spice things up a bit. I don't want us to, you know, do the same thing over and over the same, just sticking with the status quo gets very old. And there are so many channels that do that. Um, that's why we started the little mini series where we will buy like super crazy weird cases that nobody's ever purchased or reviewed before. And we'll build in those because that just adds another layer of excitement to an otherwise repetitive and boring PC build. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to do things like that again. I just wanted to give you a little behind the scenes uh, action and uh, talk a bit about, yeah, just kind of my internal thought process. It wasn't meant to be a super popular video or anything like that, but I do appreciate you watching this far into this one. And uh, if you're excited about uh, the next Pixar flop or the next PCDC, don't worry, my friends. One is coming up very, very soon. Actually, many are, but uh, one should be coming up right after this video, if I'm not mistaken. I get my schedules all screwed up. Sometimes I'm like weeks ahead, sometimes I'm weeks behind. I don't know. I gotta look at the calendar. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, click the subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. Click the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, and I will catch you in the next one. Ooh, also, I almost ended the video without mentioning this. If you live in and around Orlando, Florida, and you want yourself a free Lee and Lee 11 Mini, this is, the, again, the snow edition. Um, yeah, maybe leave a comment and I will meet whoever I pick. It's just going to be random. Um, and uh, yeah, just, I'll just give you the case for free because I don't really need it anymore. It has served its purpose. It's a fantastic case and I'd like to see it move on to a new home. So leave a comment down below. Let me know um, where you live. You can just be general, you know, city, kind of where you live in and around Orlando. And if you'd be willing to meet, and uh, I will reply to your comment, and then from there, um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll arrange to meet up. So, again, thanks for watching this part of the video. I wanted to save this for very last because most of you sign off before we even start talking about this stuff. So, uh, maybe folks are going to be confused. Why are there so many comments of people asking for that 011 Mini? That's really strange. But, uh, anyway, that's our little 
inside scoop. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for disassembling a PC with me.